So years ago, a friend of mine said, oh, I'm making this game, it's called Starhammer. Oh, cool, it was like a survival crafting sci-fi game. And they were like, oh, shit. Naming your game is the hardest part of game development that no one ever talks about. I've made this list of like best practices, little actionable processes and things. I used to just share this list with people. People can just share the video. Let's get into it. Number one, having a broad genre word and then a perspective word. So Gears of War. War is the broad genre word, but Gears of War, you're a cog in the machine. The little guy, you are not the grand strategist or whatever. Sex your expectations. Two, positive words. Try and avoid just negative words or verbs that sound like work. We had like a subtitle, run your own game shop. We changed it to open your own game shop. The start of something like ending things is usually the hard part. Verbs are good. They can not only explain what you're doing in the game, but the pace at which you're doing it. Ghost runner. Okay, go, I'm running. Probably not driving a car in Ghost Runner. No, you do drive a motorbike. They probably should have thought about that. Ghost Run is pretty good though. You're running, but also it's fast paced. Dredge, on the other hand, sounds slow. Juxtapositioning of words, nuclear throne. Nuclear, oh, it's the future, it's the 20th century. Throne, well, that's old, middle ages, kings and queens and stuff. I think there's pigeons in my air then. A cool word juxtaposed with something more banal, black desert. It's like black is a word, cool black. Desert word is a cool word, right? I named my game Desert Child. Ain't nothing cool about children, Desert Child. The idea is that you don't want to sound like you're trying too hard to have a cool name. Next one, this one's really easy. It's alliteration, Prince of Persia. Pa -pa -da -pa -pa -da. Rhythm and repetition, Prince of Persia, Sands of Time. Prince of Persia, Sands of Time. Baldur's Gate. Names in the title can imply character and narrative, even if they're just place names. We named our last game Cardboard Kings, but if we called it Harry's Card Shop, people would have come into that being like, this is a, a narrative shopkeeping game. I get it. Live and learn. Try and leave the person reading it some kind of intrigue. Metal slug, like gun, you're like, oh, I get it. But initially you're like, what is this? Why did you call it that? That's interesting. SEO, search engine optimization. As long as you're the first thing that comes up when you search your game name plus game or Steam at the end, that's enough. I recently saw a game, it was called Squidge. I'm really sorry to call you out on this one, guys. And I Googled Squidge, obviously nothing comes up. I Googled Squidge game, it's just Squid Game. Like the TV show, Squid Game. Subconscious association, I think requires a little bit more convincing when I tell people, enter the gungeon, sounds like enter the dragon. In the back of your head, if you've heard the phrase enter the dragon in the past, you're more likely to like the name. If you go to the supermarket and there's like 10 brands of something and you only know one of them, but you know that brand is only mediocre, you're still more likely to buy that than the one you've never heard of. Enter the gungeon, it's like, that kind of sounds similar to a thing I know. Same with Enter the Matrix. Oh uh, yeah, that sounds like another like martial arts thing I've seen, yeah. Uh, just a quick one, this isn't the same as conscious association or SEO baiting. So if you name your game like Elden Souls, that's just overtly trying to associate yourself. Hey, look, this thing, it's a knockoff of Dark Souls and Elden Ring. Do you, would you like to come and buy my game, please? That's a red flag. Vibe and poetry. But what remains of Edith Finch? It's a bit wordy. I like it. But with all these things that I'm saying, I think people like, oh, I've got this name, but it's bad because it doesn't tick enough the boxes. If something just works, it just works. My friend Pedro breaks rules. It's got a name in the title and it's got nothing to do with narrative, but it just works. It does make you ask a question. So you know what? My friend Pedro doesn't break as many rules as I thought, but it definitely does with the narrative one. Sometimes you can't explain why a name works and you should just go with it. Right, so I wanna break down a few good examples of names. Enter the Gungeon, it tells you the location of the game. It's a dungeon, theme of the game. Dungeons, well they're medieval. Tone of the game, Gungeon, is a pun, probably a pretty silly game. Player verbs, what do you do with guns? I don't think you're pistol whipping people, I think you'll be shooting them. 
and the subconscious association. With just the title, Enter the Gungeon, you know you're going through a gauntlet with guns, shooting monsters, because you're in a dungeon, probably getting loot, and it's a bit silly. And also you think it sounds good because it sounds like Enter the Dragon. That sounds like a pretty good name to me. Castle Crashes, it tells you the location. Castle, probably medieval. Tone, it sounds silly, you're crashing into a castle. Number of players, Castle Crashes. So this is a multiplayer game, alliteration, solidifies it. It's like, yeah, this is a silly game. Also, the subconscious association. Castle Crashes sounds like Gate Crashes. Me and my friends are going to a medieval castle and we're gate crashing it. You know almost everything you need to know about that game just from the title. Dredge, I mentioned this one before, the tone. Dredge sounds dour and depressing. Verb, what you're gonna be doing, dre dredging. The location, well, like, you're in a boat. Pace, you know, dredge. Well, you can't dredge quickly. It's a slow paced boat game with a kind of dark theme. Yeah, that's dredge, man. If you can get a one word name for your game that does that much heavy lifting. Ooh, slime Rancher, tone like Slime Rancher. Slimes are pretty silly. It tells your location, well, you know, on a ranch. The verb, you're herding slimes, pace. Now you might be like, oh, Slime Rancher is actually quite fast paced, but the whole experience, it's a relaxing. And also it has association, Slime Rancher, Monster Rancher pretty clever. And now I just want to do a few things here that are not necessary. You know, maybe this is something that you could use as like a tiebreaker. Think about how the name will look in a logo. The height, the balance, the repetition of certain letters, the spacing, the length of different words. Are you going to present this logo symmetrically or are you going to do it asymmetrically? What font are you going to use? Giving a couple of titles to your artist or your graphic designer, your logo designer. Oh, that decided it. Right. Just a quick thing you can do. How does it look in a silhouette? Just look at this logo here. Of the 10 people who will watch this video, nine of them will identify this as the Pokemon logo. Just the shape of the letters. Same thing if you do this, just the colors and the general shape. You kind of know what this is. The word pride, it made you think of Pokemon. If you can nail something like this, you can use your logo, your font, your color scheme. One last thing, and I didn't want to put this in as one of the main points that you should follow. It feels a little bit cheap. Just straight up putting the genre of your game in the title. Mobile games do this all the time, but it can also just work sometimes. Puzzle Dungeon, great example. Lighthearted, medieval themed puzzle game. It tells you a lot like already. Same with like people put survivors in the game and you know what the game is. You know, wrapping up ties in pretty well with a little plug for my game, Nanomon Virtual Pet. I put Virtual Pet in the name of my game and it doubled our daily wish list. But yeah, look, that pretty much sums it up. You know, you might be sitting there going, oh, is this that important? If you, if you think like that, and it will cost you, if you just name your game like Legend of Dungeon or something, people aren't going to take that as seriously. Okay, shit, Legend of Dungeon is actually a game. Awkward. I think it's important, and you should think it's important. Do you think that there's something that I've missed? What are some red flags? Ugh. Let me know in the comments. Hopefully I can do an updated video. All right, see you guys.